Hi everybody, this is Mostly Casual Commander, I'm BK, and today I have a game of Commander for you. Before I begin, it would mean an awful lot if you could subscribe to help support the channel. Our commanders are Ranar, Edgar Markov, Torbran, and Sithis. First up in the turn order is Buster Kittens, playing Ranar the Ever Watchful, really caring about exiling things and foretelling things. He's keeping two planes, Curse of the Swine, Ethereal Valkyrie, Thunderclap Wavern, Behold the Multiverse, and an Azorius Signant. Next up in the turn order is me, BK. I'm playing Edgar Markov. I really enjoy making tons of vampires, and in this case, making them tall. I kept a seven card hand with Marsh, Flats, Isolated Chapel, Bajuka Bog, A Plains, Vampire Nighthawk, Dusk Legion Zillet, and Metallic Mimic, which will, of course, become a vampire. So, third in the turn order is J Man, who is piloting Torbrin, Thane of Redfell. He really enjoys dealing extra damage with all of his red sources. He kept four mountains, a maze of Ith, Glorybringer, and Anger of the Gods in his opening hand. And last but not least, we have Kyle, fourth in the turn order. He kept a seven card hand. He's piloting Sithis, Harvest's Hand, Selesnya Enchantress deck. He kept Sungrass Prairie, Temple Garden, Canopy Vista, Sigil of the Empty Throne, Mirari's Wake, Verduran Enchantress, and an Overgrowth. So we'll get the game started. Buster Kins kicks it off by playing a Glacial Floodplain, passing it to me. I'll play a Marsh Flats, and on J-Man's upkeep, I sacrifice it to find a Godless Shrine, which will enter tapped. J-Man plays a Mountain, passes it to Kyle, who plays a Canopy Vista. Passing it to Busterkins, he draws and drops an island for turn, followed by an Azorius Signet. He passes it to me, I put the Godless Shrine into play, and then draw for turn, and drop a, an Isolated Chapel for my land drop. After that, I play a Dusk Legion Zillet, which triggers Edgar Markov to make me a Vampire Token, and then I get to lose a life and draw a card off of Dusk Legion Zealot. With that, I pass to J-Man, who plays a Mountain for turn, followed by a Sword of the Animist. He passes it to Kyle. He draws and drops Sungrass Prairie. He then casts Sithis, Harvest Hand, his commander, trying to get things started with all of his enchantments. Busterkins drops a Plains for turn, and he casts his commander, Ranar the Ever Watchful. Ranar discounts all foretell costs, and Busterkins gets a spirit every time he does that, along with exiling other things from the battlefield. So in this case, he got a 1-1 spirit token, passed it over to BK. I drop the planes for turn, and follow that up with a Rectos Signet. After that, I play a Metallic Mimic, naming Vampire. Unfortunately, that doesn't trigger Markov, because... It enters the battlefield as the creature type versus being the creature type on the stack. J-Man plays a mountain for turn and passed it right over to Kyle who plays a forest for his land. He then taps for an overgrowth, enchanting his forests and triggering Sithis, the harvest hand. So he gained a life, he drew a card and passed it over to Busterkins. He plays a plains for turn and then taps four for a thunderclap wyvern. And Thunderclap gives plus one plus one to all of Busterkin's creatures, in this case pumping his Ranner up to three power and dealing three damage to BK, commander damage. I play a Silent Clearing, so my land for turn. Painful mana. Pings me for one whenever I use it. I cast a Vampire Nighthawk, which triggers Edgar Markov. Both of those creatures enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. I then go to the red zone with my Dusk Legion Zealot and a token at J-Man. J-Man plays a Mountain for turn, and then he taps for a Spitfire Lagak, which has an interesting landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, he deals a damage to each opponent. Kyle plays Verdurin Enchantress, pretty similar to a Sithis, where he's drawing cards off of all the enchantments he plays. In this case, he gets triggers for playing Fertile Ground drawing two cards, playing a Temple Garden as his land for turn. Passing it over to Busterkins, he untaps, he draws, 
and he plays a soul ring really getting all of his ramp online so we could foretell all the cards and cast all the spells he casts ethereal valkyrie this card is uh, interesting it draws him cards and it exiles things which then become foretold so he's not actively foretelling the card with its ability but it becomes foretold he gets a 1-1 spirit off of Ranar. He attacks and doesn't realize that I have a flyer on my side of the board. So I gobble up his Ranar and I gain some life. So I untap, I draw for turn, and I cast Cruel Celebrant, which triggers Edgar's Eminence ability, giving a 1-1 vampire. And again, these creatures enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. I go to the red zone with my Vampire Nighthawk at Kyle, dealing him some damage and gaining some life. J-Man's turn, he casts Anger of the Gods, dealing three damage to each creature, and instead of destroying them, they're exiled instead, so I have a sad, cruel celebrant at that point. He followed up by playing a mountain and pinging us for some damage, and then he swings with his Lagak at Kyle, which of course triggers his newly equipped Sword of the Animist, finding a mountain and pinging his opponents again. On Kyle's turn, he drops a Plains, then he casts Marari's Wake, giving his creatures plus one plus one, and having his lands tap for additional mana. He recasts Sithis, Harvest Hand, and then plays Lignify on J-Man's Lagak. This triggers Sithis, drawing and gaining life. On the Busterkin's turn, he casts Arcane Signet from Fortel, so that cost him zero mana due to his Ethereal Valkyrie's ability, which reduces costs. He then recasts Ranar, the Ever Watchful, and he goes to the red zone with his Valkyrie, which has a trigger, so he gets to draw a card, and then he exiles a card from his hand. It then becomes foretold. This then triggers Ranar and allows him to produce a 1 1 spirit token. And BK takes 4 points of damage from Ethereal Valkyrie. Busterkins then plays a Cryptic Caves for his land. BK's turn, I drop Dragon Skull Summit for my land. And I tap everything, taking one life, and bringing out my commander, Edgar Markov. He's a hasty threat, pumps the whole team with plus one plus one counters on it when he attacks. So there's a trigger to get the counters on my creatures. I attack Busterkins and Kyle, so they both take some damage, and I gain some life. J-Man untaps and draws for turn, playing his Maze of Ith, allowing him to have some defense in the form of a land. He casts Azor's Gateway. An artifact that flips over to Sanctum of the Sun and providing him a whole ton of mana if he can flip it. So he exiles Oath of Chandra with Azor's Gateway. Then he moves to the red zone with his Lignified Lagak, which triggers his Sword of the Animist, finding him a mountain. So on Kyle's turn, he untaps, draws, then he taps his forest for five green mana. He uses four of it for Aether Flux Reservoir hoping to gain some life off of all the cards he's casting and possibly one shot an opponent. And then using that floating mana, he casts Sigil of the Empty Throne, triggering Aether Flux and Sithis. So he gains life and he draws a card. He then taps to gain four white floating mana. This is because of Marari's Wake, making his mana tap for more. Then cast Ghostly Prison, triggers again, gaining life and drawing cards. This also makes an angel from Vigil of the Empty Throne. He drops Field of the Dead as his land for turn, and passes it over to Busterkins. On Kyle's end step, Busterkins casts Behold the Multiverse from Fortel, scrying two and drawing some cards. He then untaps for turn, draws his card for his turn, and he drops Command Tower for his land. He then casts Selfless Spirit which was foretold in an exile. He goes to the red zone with Ethereal Valkyrie, which triggers, drawing him a card, and then making him exile a card, which again then becomes foretold. By doing this, it triggers Ranar and gives him a 1-1 Flying Spirit. Combat damage happens, so BK takes 6 damage. And then in Buster Kin's second main phase, he foretells a card, triggering Ranar again giving him a 1-1 spirit. And then he casts Angel of Finality, and he exiles cards from J-Man's graveyard. On my turn, I untap, upkeep, draw, 
play a Swamp for turn, then I tap for two black mana and cast a Cordial Vampire. Which is a 1-1, one, one, but whenever a creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on all my vampires. Then I cast Cleansing Nova, using the Destroy All Artifacts and Enchantments mode of that card. This makes Kyle super happy. Also, Sethus dies, triggering Cordial Vampire, putting a plus one plus one counter on my vampires. I then move to combat with Edgar Markov at J-Man, completely forgetting that he has a Maze of Ith. But nevertheless, we got a trigger for Edgar's ability, so all my vampires get plus one plus one. So he untaps for turn, he draws, and then he casts Torbran, Thane of Redfell, his commander. He then plays a mountain, which triggers his Lagak, recently unlignified. So that deals three damage to everybody, except for him. Then he casts Hanweir Garrison, a nice token generating creature. So Kyle untaps, draws for turn, and he casts an expensive Sithis due to commander tax. And with nothing left to do, he passes over to Busterkins. He draws, plays an island for his land, then he taps in order to cast Curse of the Swine, where X equals 5. And he makes short work of my board, as well as J-Man's commander. This gives me four boars that are two twos, and gives J-Man one. He then moves to the red zone, triggering his Ethereal Valkyrie, producing a 1-1 spirit token, and bringing BK down to 19. On my turn, I drop a Bajuka Bog, targeting Kyle's graveyard. This is mostly a meta call, because I know that he can replenish the things in his graveyard. I cast Anguished on Making to exile Raynar. Yeah, I take three life in order to do so, but at least we get his uh, commander off the battlefield. On J-Man's turn, he plays Hazaret, the Fervent and immediately goes into activating her ability and discarding a card, dealing two damage to each of them. He then moves to combat, swinging his boar at Busterkins and his Hanwer Garrison and his two new humans at BK, dealing four to BK and two to Busterkins. Kyle plays a Grassland, which triggers Field of the Dead, making him a zombie. Then he follows that up with a Wolf Willow Haven, triggering Sithis, getting a life, drawing a card. Abundant Growth is next, again triggering, matter of fact drawing two cards because of Abundant Growth. He taps, having one white floating, and plays Wild Growth. Again more triggers. He uses that one white floating to cast Aura of Silence, and at the same time gets one green floating. He then cycles a land before passing the turn. Busterkins casts Stoic Farmer at a discounted rate because of Valkyrie's ability. He finds a plains and brings it out to the battlefield. He then moves to combat, trying to take BK out of the game with all of his flyers. Uh, with the Ethereal Valkyrie's trigger on the stack, J-Man decides to help a brother out, and he uses Maze of Ith on the Selfless Spirit to untap it and remove it from combat. This would keep BK alive, but drop me down to two life. In second main phase, Busterkins casts Mist Meta Witch, effectively allowing him to blink some of the creatures on his board. I play a Swamp for turn, and then I tap out for my commander again. At this point, I'm dead on board, so I decide to just try to take out my vengeance on Busterkins. I trigger Edgar Markov on attack, and he just blocks with all of his things. So he sacrifices Selfless Spirit before the damage is dealt, keeping all of his creatures alive, and... It was worth a try. J-Man plays Fiery Emancipation, which would have all of his things dealing triple damage. He moves to combat, swinging everything at Kyle, making two more humans as he does so. Kyle declares his blockers, and before damage is dealt, he decides to sacrifice Aura of Silence, destroying the Fiery Emancipation. This reduces the amount of damage that his creatures would be dealing, but Kyle loses a few permanents in the process. He then goes to 26. J-Man passes it to Kyle. He draws, and he sacrifices his grasslands to fetch up a forest. He then plays Seder Enchanter. He follows that up by playing Luminarch Ascension that could eventually make him 4-4s. This triggers Sithis and the Seder, gaining him some life, drawing him cards. 
He then plays Enchantress's Presence, again drawing even more cards off of his enchantments moving forward, drawing a couple more cards, playing a Plains for turn. Now he erroneously triggered his Field of the Dead and thought he had a zombie, but we caught it before anything really happened with it, so it's not a big deal. Just pretend it's not there. So Sun Titan enters the battlefield on Busterkin's side of the board, and when he enters the battlefield, he brings a Selfless Spirit back from the graveyard. He then casts Empyrean Eagle, which pumps all of his flying team, moves to combat, and really wants to knock BK out of the game. But I deny him that satisfaction and tap my silent clearing, pinging myself for one, and get a good old self knockout for it. In his second main phase, he puts an Azorius Chancery onto the battlefield and returns a land to his hand. He passes to J-Man, who plays his commander, and then follows it up with a mountain, triggering his Lagak dealing three points of damage to Kyle and Busterkins. He then moves to combat, getting more humans. It's at this point we realize Kyle should not have a zombie, and we remove that. See? No harm, no foul. So proceeding with combat, Kyle blocks Hazret with the Angel, and Busterkins blocks all the humans, sacrificing his selfless spirit to keep all of his creatures alive. Then onto Kyle's turn, he casts Approach of the Second Sun. Alternate win condition card, he gains seven life and puts Approach 7th from the top of his library. He then casts an Authority of the Councils, getting three triggers and having two green floating. He plays Brushland for a land for turn, which this time it does trigger and get him a zombie from Field of the Dead. He then uses a green floating mana to cycle Tranquil Thicket and draw a card before passing the turn, having to discard down to hand size. On Busterkin's turn, he plays a Plains, and then he casts his own approach of the Second Sun. So the race is on two battling approaches. He gains seven, puts it seven from the top, moves to combat, bringing back a selfless spirit off of Sun Titan's triggered ability, drawing a card, and exiling a card. Selfless spirit comes in tapped and Kyle gains a life from authority of the councils. So all these creatures are going at Kyle. Kyle decides to try to inflict as much damage as possible, so he taps, paying a life, casts Path of Exile, and he targets Buster Kin's Ethereal Valkyrie, trying to stem some of the bleeding and deny some of Buster Kin's uh, game plan. Buster Kin's declines to find a land off of Path of Exile because his approach of the Second Sun is only a few cards down. Kyle uses his zombie to chump block Sun Titan and then double blocks using his Satyr and Sithis to kill the Stoic Farmer. And he goes to five life. On J-Man's turn, he casts Glory Bringer. But, sadly, the hasty creature comes untapped and gives Kyle one life due to authority. He casts Injury, which deals four damage to Empyrean Eagle. In response, he sacrifices the Selfless Spirit to keep it around, and also takes four from J-Man's Injury. J-Man decides to go to combat, swinging everything at Kyle. He gets two more creatures, and Kyle goes to zero. Unfortunate, but good game, Kyle. Now, moving on to Busterkin's turn. He untaps, he draws for turn, he plays a Sajiri Refuge, gaining one life. Then he casts Sarah's Emissary, naming Creature. So now he has protection from Creature, and all of his things have protection from Creatures. He then recurs Selfless Spirit with Sun Titan. J-Man uses Maze of Vith to remove Sun Titan from combat, and drops to 25. On J-Man's turn, he casts Lightning Phoenix, and realizing there's nothing else he could really do, he passes. On J-Man's end step, Buster Kins activates Cryptic Caves and draws a card. And he untaps, does his upkeep and draws, plays an island for turn, casts Niblis of Frost from Exile, and he goes to combat. He triggers Sun Titan, grabs the Cryptic Caves back to the battlefield. J-Man activates Maze of If again, targeting Sarah's Emissary and dropping to five. On J-Man's turn, he draws, hoping for some sort of way to deal with this situation. He plays a mountain and is denied even that ping. Busterkins attacks with everything and knocks out Jane. Congratulations, Busterkins, you win this game of Commander. So please let us know what you thought of this game, and please like, subscribe, and as always, thank you very much for watching.